All right, so this is going to be the first video of our review of Pyrometric and Polar. I'm going to have a complete list of the video, all the videos that we're going to be doing of this review in the description down below. So definitely go check that out if there's, you know, one thing that you're kind of just not sure about yet. So in this video, we're going to be doing our overview of parametric. Okay, so what did we learn when we talked about parametric equations? Well, first off, why do we have parametric equations, right? It's, it's another way to graph something, right? But, you know, where do they even, why do we need them? Well, for instance, if, you know, something doesn't pass a vertical line test, something like that, right? If something fails a vertical line test, then we're not going to be able to describe it as y equaling a function of x. So we describe the motion of x and the motion of y independently, right? With x of t and y of t. And our parameter, okay, parametric, parameter is going to be t, okay? This is going to be our new variable. You can kind of think of it as time, all right? That's, that's perfectly acceptable. So you get stuff like this, right? So now you have x and y being described in different equations, okay? So when you, basically what you get here is you have an input of t, right? You, you input a t value, and you're going to output, because you're going to plug it in, in this equation, in this equation, you're outputting an xy pair. Now, you can graph these using a txy table. That's kind of what we, we used when we graphed parametric. We had a t, an x, and a y, right? And then, you know, you kind of just plot those points. Remember, you have to give it direction, okay? So... Uh, let's say, let's bring up this curve again before I actually ruined it. All right, say it was going this way. All right, you have to give it direction because as time is increasing, this graph is going to be going in a certain direction and you have to point out that direction. We also were able to eliminate the parameter to get something like this back to like X's and Y's. So if you square both sides here, you're going to get X squared equals cosine squared t and you get y squared equals sine squared t and well cosine squared plus sine squared is 1 so you can say that x squared plus y squared is going to equal 1 and you can do that same thing if that didn't make sense to you you can put this equation below this equation and add them up so you can get something back into just x's and y's from your original uh, parametric equations now, we also did a bunch of calculus with parametric equations. We did derivatives, integrals, arc length, and surface area. Okay, quickly going over derivatives. There's two derivatives that we can take now. We can find dx dt and dy dt. Okay, so we have dx dt and dy dt. Okay, and we can put these together to get dy dx, okay, which is our actual derivative. Right, the one that we can use. And how we do this is by putting dy dt over dx dt. This makes sense because this would then be equal to dy dt times dt dx. The dt's you can kind of think of as canceling out right there and that gives you back your dy dx. So that's basically how you just take your derivative. Now with integrals, with integrals we use the substitution rule, okay, and this was just that we were going to ha describe x as a function of t, okay, and y as the function g of t. Okay, so when we did that, we were able to use the substitution rule, the integral from alpha to beta. Okay, so just new bounds, all right? Don't get scared because they're different letters, all right? You're going to have a g of t times an f prime of t dt. Okay, so you're just going to be taking a derivative of your x equals equation, and you just put in your g of t, and you put that, you slot that together in an integrand, and then go for it, okay? 
Now, next is arc length, and for arc length and surface area for both par parametric and polar, they all kind of start from the arc length and surface area that we learned about before when we weren't dealing with parametric or polar, right? When we were just dealing with y's and x's, okay? So you can kind of start to see the transformation. I went over that more in depth in the actual videos themselves, okay? But the arc length equation for parametric is just that the arc length equals the integral from alpha to beta of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. All right, and your surface area isn't that much different, okay? I, I mean, you're just going to basically be putting a two pi, either y or x, depending on which axis you're rotating around. So you get surface area is gonna be equal to the, the integral from alpha to beta of two pi, let's say we're rotating around the x axis, okay? So rotation about x axis, that's going to give us a two pi y, and then we have a square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt, okay? So all of this stuff is what we learned with parametric, okay? You know, it's it's just a lot of material, but it's nothing that's super hard, okay? It's definitely doable. Most of these, like for derivatives, integrals, arc length and surface area, you're just plugging into an equation, okay? All you have to know is the equation, and then you're fine. So that's going to do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for parametric and polar in the next video in the series. See you soon.